What's going on guys and welcome back to the Edison Club. Today I'm bringing you a video talking about a card that I have had in my side deck now for quite some time that I feel like most players should be using. What is that card you might ask? Well that card ladies and gentlemen is Imperial Iron Wall. Before we get into today's discussion, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really just motivates me to keep going, getting better at the game, as well as content creation. So when I see you guys hit that button and ring the bell, it really means a lot to me. So, Imperial Iron Wall is a card that I'm fairly certain I debuted in my Christia Sworn list at YCS Richmond. And we're going to kind of go over the strengths of this card and go over some decks that can play it. So we're gonna go over the decks that can play it first. I have these Dark Magicians and these Red Eyes Black Dragons kind of blocking the cards we're going to discuss versus the decks we're going to discuss. So Imperial Iron Wall, if you're not familiar with this card, is a continuous trap card that says neither player can banish cards. So decks that could use this card would be something like Light Sworn could use this card. Zombies, I feel like Mike could use this card to some kind of an extent. You do get infinite Plague Spreader zombie uses while Imperial Iron Wall, Iron Wall is on the field, but you do lose access to your Allure of Darkness and your Mizuki. So be careful when considering Imperial Iron Wall if you're playing in zombies. Something like Synchro Cat, X Sabers, Grave Keepers, Machina, Gladiator Beasts, and Black Wings. These are all decks that could definitely take some kind of advantage of playing Imperial Iron Wall. I'm a big fan of this card in Light Sworn because it's going to stun the opponent and prevent the opponent from stunning me with things like DD Crow. Same thing goes with stuff like Blackwing. You're going to be able to stun out the opponent and not have to worry about cards like Bottomless and Deep Prison. So, some cards that this uh, card does cut off. Um, this is definitely not all of them, but it's things like Vayu, Crow, the DD Survivor Macro Cosmos deck, Dragon Turbo can't summon Darkness Metal, the Fairy deck can't summon Soul of Purity and Light, they can't banish with Dialk, Caius does nothing, Amaryllis does nothing, Bottomless and Deep Prison do nothing, as well as Soul Release and Miracle Fusion. So this, this is a very, very strong card. Let's say you're playing against Vayu Turbo, and Imperial Iron Wall is one of my favorite cards to put in against Vayu Turbo playing Christia Sworn. I no longer have to worry about Vayu's Graveyard Effect. I no longer have to worry about Dark Arm Dragon. I no longer have to worry about Didi Crow. I no longer have to worry about Caius the Shadow Monarch. I no longer have to worry about Bottomless Trap Hole. And I also no longer have to worry about Dimensional Prison. That is a lot of cards in their deck that I no longer have to worry about. Now you do have to be careful when you do activate this card, because let's say that you normal summon Black Wing Sure of the Blue Flame, your opponent activates Bottomless Trap Hole, and you think to yourself, haha, I got you, I'll chain Iron Wall. Well, unfortunately, Bottomless is going to attempt to resolve as far as it can. It's going to destroy your Shura, send it to the graveyard, and not get banished due to Iron Wall. The same thing would be true for a card like Nobleman of Crossout, where if you chain this Imperial Iron Wall to Nobleman of Crossout, your face down flip effect monster gets destroyed and the ones in your deck do not get banished. But if Imperial Iron Wall is already face up on the field, these cards cannot even be activated. Same thing goes for Allure of Darkness. You never want to chain Iron Wall to Allure of Darkness because then they just get to draw and reveal a dark and they don't have to banish. That actually could be a little bit of a one up for you if you're playing this in zombies is chaining your Iron Wall to your Allure. It could be be kind of cool, but nonetheless, going through the Vayu Turbo deck, you shut off so many cards in their deck. I wanted to set a card for Vayu that I felt like was high impact, and I originally almost played Shadow Mirror, but just the fact that this card shuts off these things and this, it's basically little baby Royal Decree in itself, and then the DD Survivor stuff, you know, they can't vanish, you don't have to worry about Macro and D Fissure. It's not the best card against Dragon Turbo. I do put this card in against Dragon Turbo when I play against it in tangent with Oppression because it kind of can be baby Royal Oppression, just stopping them from being able to uh, DD Crow you. I've seen some Dragon Turbo players use Crow, but also summon uh, Darkness Metal. And then, like I said, Fairies, you kind of cut off their recycling capabilities with their Dimensional Alchemist and any deck that plays Caius. 
Amaryllis is just kind of a given. And then um, we already talked about these. And then Soul Release is kind of the same category as DD Crow. But then also Miracle Fusion. I've actually found myself playing against Hero Beat. And instead of putting in Decree, I've been putting in Iron Wall. Because like we've already talked about, it does stop some of the bigger trap cards that you struggle with. But it also stops Miracle Fusion. Absolute Zero can be a problem for some decks. So sometimes just being able to prevent them from getting into their big guys by locking them out of banishing can definitely get you there. So just wanted to make a very quick little discussion video about Imperial Iron Wall, and I think that more players should be using it. I think the decks that can shine the most playing this card are going to be Light Sworn, Blackwing, um, Machina, and probably Gladiator Beasts. These are relatively just completely unaffected by this card. Light Sworn, the only cards in your deck that banish are Soul of Purity and Light if you're on Christia Sworn and Gold Sark. Blackwing, the only card in your whole deck I believe that banishes is like Dark Arm Dragon. Just be careful if you're on Bottomless and Deep Prison as well. Remember, you're going to shut those off. Kind of the same thing for Gladiator Beast, Bottomless and Deep Prison. Um, Gladiator Beast is also going to prevent you from getting DD Crowed on Bestiari. And bottomless on Bestiari, so that's pretty cool. Same thing goes with Machina Fortress, and you're not going to get Crowed or bottomless on your Fortress Summons, and we kind of already talked about. These are like a little bit lower um, Rogue here, like your Gravekeepers and x and your Synchro Cat, but these decks could definitely play that card as well. I also want to go over and mention the list of upcoming events that I have on the screen. As you can see, January 27th, we have a Nintendo Switch tournament being held at Picante TCG in Greensboro. We have on February the 3rd, we have a Tingu format $500 cash tournament EBG. This is kind of them dipping their toes in the water for Tingu format. Um, just want to reiterate that this is Tingu plant format, not Edison format. This one on the 3rd. Then we here we go on the 24th, we have another Nintendo Switch tournament at Picante TCG. And then March the 2nd, 2024, we have a 1K 3v3 at Big Boy Gaming. It's going to be held at the uh, state fairgrounds yet again, just like how the 5K was. And then 420, we're going to have YCS Raleigh. No announcements on an Ultimate Time Wizard tournament yet, but we do know that Konami likes to announce those about a week before the event happens. But if nothing else, you know that there will definitely be Edison pods that you can play in. And it will be a good time. I will not be at the Nintendo Switch tournament on the 27th. That is the weekend of my honeymoon. So I will be gone. But I will be at the other one. So I'll see you guys there. Thank you all for watching. This is Mike from the Edison Club signing out until the next one.